Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to end up with me having somebody take a picture of my own murder. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had an assignment for me. I do, Steve. Your plane leaves for Haiti in one hour. Haiti? Well... I guess I'd better brush up on my voodoo before somebody puts the double whammy on me. Might be a good idea, Steve, because I'm sending you down there to put the whammy on somebody else. What's the deal, Commissioner? Have you seen the current issue of this picture magazine? No. What about it? We've got a spread on Haiti. Here, take a look at it. This picture in particular. Native jungle deep in interior of Haiti. <laughs> so it's a native village. What am I supposed to do? Go down there and check the plumbing? Take a look at those natives in the background. Uh, just a bunch of them standing around the huts and... Hey, wait... One of them looks like he's wearing a leather flight jacket. Right. We got a copy of that picture and had a section of it blown up. Mm. Can you read the name on that flight jacket now? F. Carlson. F. Carlson it is. Well, look, Commissioner, I still don't see... Remember Operation Fishhook? I heard the name a couple of months ago, but I never knew what it meant or anything. Uh, Two months ago, a group of scientists left for the Caribbean to conduct research and tests. They were working on a revolutionary theory of anti-submarine warfare, a self-propelled depth charge with a proximity fuse. That was Operation Fishhook? Yes, I'll skip the technical details, but what it boils down to is the most effective weapon against a submarine that's ever been devised. Mm, How'd the tests work out? We don't know. They were conducted in secret over a small island in the Caribbean. The scientists completed their research and compiled all the data. Then they took off for the States in a plane. That's the last we ever heard of them. Wait a minute. I seem to remember reading about a group of scientists being lost at sea. The same group, Steve. We suspected their plane had crashed into the ocean, that it had been sabotaged. That is, we suspected it until this magazine came out. The magazine? You mean... I mean the pilot of that plane was a man named F. Carlson. The flight jacket. Steve, it's possible Carlson or some of the others are still alive, and it's also possible. That data they compile is floating around in Haiti somewhere. I'm sending you down there to get it. Just like that, huh? It's quite possible, even probable, that other interests have seen this picture in the magazine, too. That means it's going to be a race. Sounds real jolly. Any contacts in Haiti who can help me? Only one. The photographer took the pictures. Her name is Virginia Collins, and we've learned she's still in Haiti at the Hotel Christoph in Port-au-Prince. Now, Steve, get down there. Talk to Virginia Collins and go anywhere and do anything that's necessary to recover that data. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you'll find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of poking my way through a jungle in Haiti to find a leather flying jacket, the pilot who used to own it, and some vital data on anti-submarine warfare. And according to the commissioner, I'm sure to have some competition on the deal, which gives me an uneasy hunch that sooner or later, I'll run into an amateur voodoo artist who'll be trying his best to charm me to sleep with a slug. Well, it's Thursday when my plane lands at Port-au-Prince. The air's like a hot, wet blanket, and... I check in at the Hotel Christoph, but the clerk tells me Virginia Collins has gone out for a while, so I get a drink and go out on the veranda to wait for it. I drop into a seat beside a neat-looking little gent in a Panama suit. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. I believe the proverbial question is, is it hot enough for you? I believe the proverbial answer is, yes. (laughs) Well, you'll be very much encouraged to hear that it gets much hotter than this sometime. Well, thanks for the good news. You seem to be enjoying the weather. No, quite to the contrary. I detest it. I wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for my infernal conscience. Conscience? Yes. Without that, I could be quite comfortable sitting in my New York apartment writing my books. But no, my conscience tells me I must make them authentic. So 
Here I am. You write novels? <laughs> Hardly. Allow me to introduce myself. Hmm. I am Professor Ernest A. Dalrymple. Mine's Steve Mitchell. I see my name doesn't mean anything to you, Mr. Mitchell. Well, it's quite a mouthful, Professor Dalrymple, but beyond that, I... You, uh, apparently are not a student of folklore. Oh, not exactly. They tell me I am one of the foremost authorities on that subject. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here now. My next book is to have a section devoted to voodoo. And I've learned that there's to be a very rare ceremony performed in the back country in a few days now. So I'm here to witness that if I can. I see. That stuff still goes on in the back country, huh? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. And some of the things which happen are completely incredible to most people. For instance, there's one particular ceremony. Yeah? Uh, more properly, an initiation rite. The mamaloi. Mama who? The mamaloi, the native priestess. Oh. She takes a rooster. Hey, excuse me, but do one of you men happen to be Steve Mitchell? Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> right now, it looks like a lucky name. Well, leave us not be coy. I have a hangover. Oh. The clerk said you were asking about me. Oh, you're Virginia Collins? Mm-hmm, the same. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, could it be done over a Ramos fizz? It could. Well, lead the way. Excuse me, Professor. Maybe you can fill me in on uh, Mama Loy and her rooster some other time, huh? I should be delighted, sir. You know, Steve, if I don't watch out, mm, I'm going to be feeling almost human again. <laughs> now, uh, what was it you wanted to talk about? You took some photographs of a native village for a picture magazine recently, Virginia. What about them? That's what I want to know. Where'd you take them? Say, what is this, anyway? What do you mean? Well, you're the second guy who's asked me about those pictures. What? Well, yeah, somebody sidled up to me in the lobby just a couple of hours ago and wanted to know all about them, too. Who was he? Well, I don't know. Never saw him before. Huh. Well, they're not losing any time. What's with the pictures, anyway? There was a native in one of them. He was wearing a leather flight jacket. Oh. Oh, yeah, I, re I remember now. I'd like you to tell me where the village is. Okay, it's a little village inland near La Chapelle, but I'll do better than just tell you about it. I'll take you there. Oh, well, that sounds real obliging of you. Uh, look, I'm Virginia Collins' girl reporter, remember? Huh? And if there is a story, mm, I want it. Okay, it's a deal. I suppose we'll need a guide to get there. Yeah, and I know a good one. I'll take care of it, Steve. You just meet me out on the terrace a little before dawn, and we'll start then. just getting gray the next morning when I walk out onto the terrace. I start towards the other end where I'm supposed to meet Virginia, and then suddenly I hear a rustle in the bushes. I whirl around as a glint of metal, and I hit the ground. The slug whistles by my ear. I scramble to my feet and take off in the direction of the shot. There's no one in the bushes, but I spot a native running across the courtyard. I cut him off as he gets to the other side. <laughs> let go! Let go! Oh, no. Who hired you to take a shot at me? Lobo, no, shoot! Look, don't give me that. See? Steve, what? Oh, this joker just threw a shot at me. No. Who, Lubo? Oh, why, Steve, Lubo wouldn't do anything like that. Wait a minute. You know this guy? Well, sure. He's our guide, Lubo. Why? Oh, he's okay, Steve. I'm sure of it. Look, if you aren't the guy who shot at me, Lubo, why were you running just now? <laughs> Lubo here shot from bushes. Lubo think maybe somebody shoot at him. Lubo start to run. Then where did the sniper go, I wonder? There's a lot of bushes around the terrace, Steve. Whoever it was could have worked his way clear around the hotel. Yeah. He or she could have, all right. Hmm? I'll skip it. You know, um, it looks like somebody doesn't want you to take this trip, Steve. It sure does, Virginia. Which means the sooner we get started, the better. We go as far as we can in the Jeep, and then we take off through the jungle. It's hot and sticky, and after about four hours of thrashing around through the brush, Lubo motions up ahead. Village, just ahead. That's good news. I've had enough of this jungle for a while. Oh, what a girl will do for a story. Our people go to village, too. What do you mean, Lubo? Lubo, she marks a long trail. Somebody passed this way before us. Oh, you mean some natives? No, not natives. What? Here is village. Oh, brother. These villages are well hidden. You don't see them until you're right on top of them. Mm, looks like the whole town's turned out to greet us. Ah. This is the village where you took the picture of the native in the flight jacket, huh, Virginia? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Here, Lubo. 
Take this picture and see if any of the people here know where this guy lives. Lubo uh, do. So what happens if you find the native with the fly jacket, Steve? Look, I thought you were just along to take some more pictures. Talk about the proverbial clam. Well, you never heard of a clam who could keep his trap shut getting killed, did you? <laughs> Maybe you've got a point. Wait a minute. Lubo's beckoning to us. Did you uh, locate that native, Lubo? Uh, people say he lived with a white plant man. White plant man? Yes, in house over there. I Come. don't see any... <laughs> Wait. There is a small house back behind those trees. Yeah. Yeah, so there is. Funny, I, I, I didn't even notice it when I was here before. What did they mean by white plant man, Lubo? Uh, Lubo do not know, but they say native works for this man. I take it you're the white plant man. Well, uh, I am a botanist, if that is what you mean. Henri Valdez. Oh, my name's Mitchell. This is Miss Collins. How do you do? Mademoiselle, uh, pleased to come in. Thank you. Visitors to my house are most infrequent, but always welcome. Uh, how may I serve you? Well, first, I think you'd better look at these credentials, Monsieur Valdez. So, a government agent. Well, you're full of surprises, Steve. Next, I'd like you to look at this picture. Why, it is a picture of Bala. He worked for you? Oh, oui. As I told you, I am a botanist. Bala knows this country like the palm of his hand. I send him into the jungle for botanical specimens, and he never fails me. He takes a lot of trips into the jungle, huh? Oh, to be sure. And would you believe it, monsieur? I simply describe to Bala an appuntias picardi, and uh, voila, he brings me back his specimen. Well, right now I'm a little more interested in another specimen Bala brought back here a while ago. A leather flight jacket. Oh, the leather jacket. Oh, we oui. He brought that back a month ago, I would say. You happen to remember where you'd sent him the time he brought it back? Quite well. Observe on this map. Uh -huh. This village is uh, here. Uh -huh. To the east. This large plateau. That could be where he got the jacket, then. Somewhere on that plateau. Oh, oui, it is a most wild country. Okay, I'd like to talk to Bala, Monsieur Valder. I am sorry, Mitchell, but I fear it is impossible. What do you mean? Well, not one hour ago, Bala left for the plateau country. Oh, great. Alone? No, two men came here to the village and hired him as a guide. Looks like you've been running a poor second all the way, Steve. Yeah, and I've got to make it at least a tie. Could I borrow this map of yours, Valder? Why, certainly. Thanks. Yes. Come on, Virginia. Let's get Lubo and start moving. You think we're gaining any on Valder and the boys who hired him, Steve? I'm beginning to think we're not supposed to be gaining any on them, Virginia. Well, what do you mean? Stop here. But Lubo will get too far ahead of us. Let him go for a moment. Well, what's the matter, Steve? Look at this map I borrowed from Valder. Well, what about it? There's the village where Valder lives, and over here, directly to the east of the village, is the river we're supposed to cross before we get to the plateau. Well, so what? So we should have been traveling east since we left the village three hours ago. Now okay. take a look at the sun. Uh -huh. It's setting on our left. Unless they've changed things pretty recently, the sun sets in the west. Steve! Steve, that it means... It means we're going north. North? Well, Steve, you think Lubo's trying to get us lost? I don't know. Here he comes. I guess I better have it out with him right now. Be careful, Steve. No, follow Lubo. Something is wrong? Yeah, Lubo, I think something is wrong. That surprise you? Lubo, do not know what you mean. No? You sure somebody didn't pay you to take us in the wrong direction and delay us? Lubo, guide you good. Oh, sure, you guide us great, except all the while we've been going north instead of east. Lubo go north on purpose. Yeah, that's the point. Now, because look. Because of river. River? What do you mean? River big with rain. Too hard to cross at usual place. So we go north to narrow place. Then we cross it. Oh. Just how much farther is this narrow place? Not far. Maybe one hour. Okay, Lubo. We'll go along with you for one hour. Get going, but just remember, I'll be right behind you, watching you every foot of the way. going at least an hour, and there's no sign of a river. Yeah, it's starting to get dark, too. Look at Lubo walking along ahead of us. 
He's probably just waiting until it does get dark enough, and then he'll... I, I... thought you were the one who told me Lubo could be trusted, Virginia. Well, I... I thought he could be, Steve. When he brought me to that village to get the pictures that time, he seemed all right. That's why I hired him for this trip. It's obvious he just tried... Hold it, Virginia. Hmm? Quiet. Well, what do you know? Steve, it sounds like a river. It sure does. River here! Okay, Lubo. Come on, Virginia. Yeah. Looks like I had Lupo pegged all wrong. See, a narrow crossing here. It sure is. Well, I... Yeah. Wait. What's that? Voodoo drums. Voodoo? Oh, great. Oh, do not be afraid. Drums tell of ceremony in village tonight. How much farther to the village, Lupo? By sound of drums. He's not far. Well, you better get started. Oh, look, my feet are killing me. How about me just dunking them in the river a few minutes, huh? Okay, but hurry it up. <laughs> I'll just be a minute. We save much time by coming this way. Yeah. I gotta hand it to you, Lubo. I guess you know this country pretty well, all right. Of course, you made a trip as far as the last village only a couple of weeks ago, didn't you? Uh, yes. Lubo guide the woman who take pictures to village. Yeah, Virginia. Lubo did not know her name. I mean Virginia Collins, the woman who's with us now. No, he's not the one. What? This woman with us, she's not the one who took the pictures. You sure about that? Lubo, sure. And who is she? Lubo do not know. She come last night in city, ask Lubo to guide her and you up here. Lubo never see her before in his life. You are listening to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Well, at this point, the whole deal is turned into a game of who's who. First, I think that Lou goes in with the other team, but he turns out to be okay. Now, it looks like Virginia Collins, or whatever her name is, is my grade-A suspect. Now, we cross the river and head to the village, and the drums keep getting louder. Village very close now. Oh, good. I don't have any desire to be wandering around this jungle in the dark. Think it's too dark to take a picture, Virginia? That picture? Yeah. Isn't that what you do for a living, take pictures? Well, sure, but I... Why don't you take a picture of me? You? Now? Why not? Well, it's it's pretty dark. Oh, don't you know how to use a flash bulb? Say, what is this anyway, Steve? Nothing. I just want to have my picture taken. But you... Okay. Wait till I put a bulb in. All right. Smile pretty. Yes. That make you happy? You know, you handle that camera like an expert. I make my living at it, remember? Yeah. I wonder if my picture will turn out as good as those you took for your magazine. Look, Lubo's leaving us behind. Hey, we'd better catch up. Yeah, sure. Those drums. Give me the creeps. Well, you better get used to them. They'll probably be going on quite a while. Oh, look. Look, there's a village in the clearing. Yeah. I wonder who that native woman is that Lubo just talked to. <laughs> Whoever she is, she sure looks official. Everything all right. I've arranged with Mama Tibo for us to stay overnight. Mama who? Tibo. She's Mama Loy here. Well, whatever that means. The Mama Loy is the voodoo priestess. Funny, you wouldn't know that after all those pictures you've taken in Haiti. Mama Loy, Mama Loy. Do you have to be a student of voodoo to take pictures? Mama Tibo say there are other guests in the village. Yeah, I see them standing over there. Two men. Steve, wait a minute. Isn't one of them the man you were talking to back at the hotel when I first met you? Yeah, Professor Dalrymple, the folklore king. Yeah, yeah but who's the other one? I don't know. I never saw him before. You think they're the ones who hired the native boy in the leather jacket of... Uh, oh, what's his name? That Bala. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mama Tibo say hut over there is for you, miss. <laughs> okay. Might as well go and take a look at it. Stuff. See you later. Okay, Virginia. Lubo. Uh, yes? Circulate around the village. See if you can locate Bala and tell him I want to see him secretly. Lubo, do. Mitchell! Oh, Mitchell! Well, hello, Professor Dalrymple. Well, I thought I recognized you and Miss Collins as you entered the village. Uh, this is my guide, Miss Hunt. Hi. I am honored, Monsieur Mitchell. Well, I didn't realize you two were interested in voodoo, Mitchell. I am interested in quite a few things, Professor. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. The ceremony in honor of Dambala is to start any moment. Who's Dambala? The principal voodoo god. 
Oh, it's quite a fascinating spectacle. Mama Tebow has kindly given me permission to witness it, which is quite a rare privilege, I might add. But would you care to be my guest? I, sorry, I'm afraid that's a little out of my line. Perhaps it is just as well. Such ceremonies often have an undesirable effect on spectators. Oh? Uh, I'm going to get something to eat, Mr. Dalimber. I will meet you later. Yes, uh, very well, Precisely. Ah, very strange fellow, to be sure. Precisely? Yes. Yes, he's the one disappointment on an otherwise rewarding trip. What do you mean? Well, back in Port-au-Prince, I tried to hire the native guide I've had for these trips in the past, but he was unavailable. And this chap, Brissac, introduced himself to me and prevailed on me to hire him as my guide. Oh? But soon after we started, I realized he knew very little about this country. Then, when we reached the village where the French botanist lives, Brissac was quick to hire this Bala as another guide. He seized upon Bala as soon as he saw him. It was... Almost as if he recognized him. Well, that's very interesting, Professor. I've... Uh... Monsieur Mitchell. Hmm? Oh, excuse me, Professor. Sure. What is it, Lubo? Bala at voodoo ceremony. Okay, thanks. I've uh, changed my mind, Professor Dalrymple. I'd like to witness that ceremony with you. Well, splendid, splendid. Come, it may have already started. The professor and I start walking through the village. On the way, I spot Virginia standing outside her hut talking to Brissac, which doesn't surprise me much at this point. The two of them could be in the deal together. Well, we reach the clearing where the ceremony is being held, and it's quite a sight. The natives are squatting around in a circle, and in the middle of them, Mama Tibo is whirling around and around. Professor Dalrymple eagerly starts taking notes. Mitchell, just look at her. Isn't she magnificent? Oh, hardly what you'd call ballroom dancing. I dance with her. Now comes the incantation. See the native who just stood up. The chant groans on. One by one, the natives jump up and start dancing. If you can call it that, then I spot Bala, the boy in the leather jacket. He's whirling around, kicking up his heels and in general having himself a time. I catch his eye a couple of times and jerk my head for him to come over, but he doesn't pay any attention. Just keeps whirling around faster and faster. Then my eyes slide past Bala to a figure on the other side of the clearing. It's Brissac, and he's watching Bala like a hawk. This is just great. How am I going to get to Bala without Brissac knowing about it? Finally, Bala keels over in a trance, and a couple of other natives drag him away. The dance continues. By now, I've had it. My one chance of talking to Bala is gone. I think I can see a grin on Brissac's face. After a few minutes more, I go back to my hut, and I've got a visitor. You wanted to see me? Bala, I thought you were in some kind of a trance. Bala saw your signal, pretended to be in trance, so could talk to you. Well, you're a really cagey character, aren't you? All of a sudden, everybody wants to talk to Bala. Bala think maybe you pay more money than other men who hired him. You mean Brissac? Not know his name. Yeah, I want to talk to you, all right. Look, you're wearing a leather jacket with the name F. Carlson on it. Where'd you get it? In small village, two, three hours from here. White man there with broken legs. What? Natives caring for him. But he's still alive, huh? Still alive. Will you take me to him? For money. Okay, for money. Let's get going. We've been going at least two hours, Bala. We should be getting close, huh? Not more than one hour or... What's the matter? Somebody follow us. You sure? Bala, sure. Hmm. Could be three second Virginia. Bala, fix. Oh. You follow river. Lead you straight to village and white flyer, man. Bala, go other direction. And lead them away, huh? Okay, go to it, Bala. I'll see you later. Bala disappears into the brush, and I start following the river towards the village ahead. Then, as I'm walking along, I notice all of a sudden there's... No sound in the jungle. No birds. Nothing. It's all quiet. Too quiet. The scream comes from my left. I take off in that direction. I pound along, round a tree trunk, and then... There he is, on the ground in front of me. Bala. Now I know why he stopped screaming so suddenly. How can you scream when your throat's been cut? Now I know 
that whoever's following me is way too close for comfort. I tuck back into the brush and take off to the village on the double. Half an hour later, I'm there. I manage to make the natives understand I'm looking for a white man. They point to a small hut. Inside, there's a guy lying on the floor with both legs bandaged. Hi. Carlson? Yep. What's left of me? Steve Mitchell, agent from the States. I traced you here by your flight jacket. Oh, brother, my clutch, you did. I was beginning to think I was going to rot away in this Carlson, jungle. what happened? Uh, I was piloting some scientists back in the small island in the Caribbean. Something went wrong with a plane. Sabotage? Could be. We crashed into a mountain not far from here. The others were all killed. Some natives found me, brought me here. They've been taking care of me ever since. Look, those scientists were bringing back some valuable data about a new underwater explosive. Yeah, I managed to get the whole file out of the wreckage. Good. I've been using it for a pillow. <laughs> I'll take it. And... Just in time to give it to me, Mitchell. What? Hand that over, please. Well, the old professor himself. Yes, precisely. Quite an act you put on about being an authority on voodoo, Dalrymple. Amazing the things one can learn out of a book. And throwing suspicion on your guide, Brisek. That was pretty neat, too. Mitchell, do not attempt to stall. Hand over that file at once. Suddenly, I spot somebody standing in the shadows outside the hut. It's Virginia with her camera over her shoulder. She acts like she's trying to keep out of sight. This I don't get at all. If she's working with Dalrymple, why the hide-and-seek act? Then an idea hits me, a wild chance, but my only one. Did you hear me, Mitchell? Give me that file. You know, this would make quite a picture, Professor. Me handing over a file of secret information to a foreign agent. Quite a picture indeed. Mitchell, I warn you. I will count three. If you have not given me the file by then... Virginia I gives me a puzzled look. I don't know whether she's gotten the message or not. One. She looks at her camera, then slips it off her shoulder. Two. Dalrymple starts swinging the gun towards me just as Virginia presses the shutter. <laughs> what? The blinding flash startles the professor. He jerks his head towards the door, but before he gets back to me, I get to him with a right hook. <laughs> a little too late, professor. Steve. Steve. Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks for the assist with the flash bulb, Virginia. Oh, sure. It ought to make a great picture. Not that I'm not happy to see you, but how'd you get up here? Well, I had Lubu bring me when I discovered you'd left. You know, you just can't shake a girl reporter that easy. Glad I couldn't. One thing still puzzled me. Are you really Virginia Collins? Oh, certainly. But according to Lubu, you're not the one who took the pictures for the magazine. Oh, that. Well, just between us two, Steve, I was in Cuba when I got the assignment to Haiti, but, well, uh, there was a guy in Cuba. I ended up by missing the boat. So I wired ahead to my assistant, who was already in Haiti, to take the pictures for me. But don't you tell anyone about that. Okay. Now, how about giving me the whole story? First, we've got to get Carlson back to civilization. But after that? Sure, I'll give you the story. But, of course, it'll take some time. What do you mean? Uh, you do somewhere else on another assignment? Well, yes. I, I should be on my way to Trinidad in the morning. Where's your assistant? Well, as a matter of fact, um, she's in Trinidad right now. Well, you better send her a wire, Virginia. I got a strong hunch you're going to miss that boat again. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo. Music by Robert Armbruster and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next week at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another... Dangerous Assignment. It's on NBC.